The more you know, the more you come to an understanding you know very little. And what you don't know actually increases. So knowledge increases your ignorance. <laughs> and purpose of knowledge is to be aware that you are ignorant of a lot of things. Do you see what I'm saying? If knowledge gives you an idea, you know it all, then it is no knowledge. That is real ignorance. That is real ego. I know it all. What do you know? <coughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> now, when intellect matures, it comes up with this question, what is the purpose of life? This question is a sign of matured intellect. And it must arise, then our human life begins. An inquiry begins towards truth. This very question is very significant for our life. What is the purpose of life? If it doesn't arise, that means our intellect is not yet mature, mind is not yet matured. Now, when this question arises, don't be in a hurry to find an answer. You ask this question to anyone, if they know the answer, they won't tell you. And if someone tries to tell you, don't listen to them, they don't know. <laughs> You can plug your ears and walk away, they don't know. <laughs> Those who know it cannot tell you, will not tell you. Because that very question serves like a tool for you to dig into yourself. This is the very vehicle on which you can probe deep, you can become much deeper. Purpose of life, what is the purpose of life? We have spent so many years, so much time and effort and money in learning this and that. We have never learned about our own life, about our own mind, about our own self. This is a pity. We do not know how to handle our own mind. But we know how to handle everything else. How can our life be at peace? Not possible. Hmm? So that's why I thought, okay, what we should do? We should do something. Then we said, okay, we'll have number of techniques that can come in handy for you at those moments. Huh? So I put it as a small course, two-day program, an art of living course. In this, you learn simple things with some pranayama and the kriya and the techniques which transforms you from the depth. Hmm? And many of you have already experienced it, no? So beautiful, such, it makes such a difference then. Isn't it? Hmm? The first act of life, you know, what is it? We inhale. And the last act of life is? Exhale. Exhale, and that is it. A breath plays a very important role in managing our mind. And so our body too. There is some rhythm in the breath. And this rhythm is connected to the rhythm in the world the rhythm in the nature, the rhythm in the body, the rhythm of your thoughts and rhythm of your emotions. So breath plays a very important role. 
Mind is very abstract, means you cannot directly deal with the mind. The only thing you can do is you can speak about whatever your feelings are, and you may feel a little relief for a while, and then, but again it starts with the same pattern, same habits. But if you attend your breath, then it, the root cause of this problem, or any problem that the mind is facing, is eliminated. It works on the very cause level. So your daily life, you can live life with a smile from inside. After all, what do we, why do we live, what do we want in our, from our life? You'll see that all that you want boils down to happiness. You want to be happy. And the whole life we prepare to be happy and we are never happy. It's like making bed all night and having no time to sleep. But if you are aware, if you are open, if your heart is open, you will see that every moment you can live in the knowledge. No matter what you are doing, you don't have to get away from all this and sit in some corner, some mountain, some monastery, somewhere. No, no. You can be doing your work, be in your job, do all that you want to do, and yet maintain that inner when awareness. We sing, you know, all minds are saying the same sound. So there is a unification of all the mind. When we are thinking, we are, everybody is thinking different. But when we sing, the same song resonates in every mind. That's why singing has been a part of all practices from ancient time. The Sanskrit being the most ancient, it taps vertically, somewhere deep down, those layers of our mind, which is very old, very ancient. Our mind is very, very ancient. Body is getting renewed, but the spirit somewhere deep inside has all the memories of thousands of years, thousands of years. So what happens, somewhere the chord strikes and it resonates from deep down in your consciousness. Now we have said that to grow in life you have to live in the present moment, isn't it? Is that not what I have been telling? <laughs> All the time, what do we say? Whatever happened in the past happened, finished, it's like a dream. Live in the present moment. To live totally in the present moment Offer all that you have done, all your activity, <coughs> drop them, surrender them. It's done, finished, drop it. Tad arpita, offering all your activity of the present, of the past, and your plans of the future, offering it all, your mind becomes free. Whether you want or not, you are anyway offering when you sleep. Every night you offer all that you did. Because offering one means what? Letting go. You are holding something. L loosening your hold is offering. Unconsciously you offer every activity in sleep, but while acting consciously, if you could offer a switch happens in consciousness. Something happens, suddenly you experience, you find you are not a limited mind or body, but you have an infinite dimension to yourself. And you are much bigger than what you thought you were. This realization comes. That is divine love. A thrill, a joy, which cannot equal anything else. 
dawns that very moment when you offer. Such a peace and such a bliss dawns in your heart that very moment when you offer everything, all activity. Professional players, this word is so paradoxical. <laughs> How can profession be a game? I would say if an alien comes and watches football game, he would think the people in this planet are mad or crazy. <laughs> what people are doing? A piece of leather ball? <laughs> and they want to put it through a basket? And 25 people rushing, hitting each other, falling on each other and... <laughs> say, what is a big job about? Joy about it. And so many people, millions sitting there, clapping their hands, yelling, shouting. <laughs> he cannot understand. Why should people fight about one ball? <laughs> he would say, I would give one ball to each one of you. He would say, each one of you go and put it in the basket if that gives you joy. So many heads and so many forms and thousands of heads. The master is like a window. Through him, you can see the infinite. He is limitless compassion and grace. To know him is to be touched by his childlike simplicity and joy. In his presence, one experiences a profound silence that is beyond words. Joy, love, playfulness, poetry, deep wisdom, and a twinkle of mischief have all come together as Sri Sri Ravi Shankar.